asked me to do today was tell my story because it really relates to the depth and breadth to me of Tonality Pro and, and, and just what it brings to the party. So for me, it's all about finding your voice. It's about finding that divine spark of, of divine fire in what you do and bringing that into your work, bringing that into your life, and bringing that into the world. And that's what I always try to do in my work, is find that extra, ah, that just makes you go, my God, I'm glad to be alive. <laughs> and I believe that the finest photograph is love and light made visible. And that's what drives me personally to photograph anything that I do. So to that end, there's something called signature that I try to bring to my work and that anybody that I work with or, or share photography with we talk about it. So what's signature? Well, signature is that thing that allows you to know a person's voice on the phone. You know when it's them walking down the hallway, they have a signature way they dress. And in photography or any art you do, um, if you're really bringing yourself heart and soul and completely into your work, you have a signature. But you can't help it because it's literally imbued with who you are. And that's how we know you through your work. But one of the things uh, about a signature, for me anyway, is that they're common, um, maybe some common threads. For me, I'm on a journey. That's life to me. We're on a journey. I love diminishing lines. I love the sense of we're going somewhere. I can't stand in one place very long. I mean, it's painful to be like lashed to this spot right now. But I can't, and I love going to the light and to the mystical mist. It just thrills me. So you'll find that a lot in my work. I also love perspective. I love other people's perspective. I love the sense of, oh my goodness, you know, you're so small and that's so big. That kind of perspective. I also really love the, the looking up and the perspective of new tree and old wood and oh my goodness, looking up. I'm always looking up in life as well as in my work. So it's kind of a literal translation. Uh, juxtapositions of now you've got perspective and juxtapositions, the tree, and this is Bryce Canyon, the hoodoos at Bryce Canyon. Not a normal, uh, usual way to see Bryce Canyon. I love that. I like to see what's under the skirt, so apparently that's what I did here. And I love the juxtaposition of species, even. This was a moment with this black swan, was like the carp were just having their day. And this, and this poor bird is like, I've had enough of the carp, I'm leaving. And he tries to paddle away and he couldn't because he kept tripping over the carp. And he just got so frustrated, he just goes, Argh! and he like glared at this carp and this carp is like, hi. And boom, there's that moment, juxtaposition. It's just interesting and startling and fun and colorful. I love humor and I'll take it wherever I find it. And unexpected moments. Um, this one, I skipped. This one was of, uh, these cows were on their way. They were on a mission. This is out in Satley, in the, up in the mountains, in Sierra Nevada mountains. And they were on a mission. They're, I guess it was dinner time or something. And my husband and I were driving along and we're like, oh my God, we've got to get the cows. I said, I know just how to do it. And uh, we drove ahead of them, got stationed. I said, are you ready? Just as they were coming, he goes, yeah, I'm ready. And so I sang Home on the Range in a low and lovely tone. And they stopped and looked, it lasted about eight seconds, and then they ran like hell. So, <laughs> so unexpected moments just I mean, amuse me for days. I, I have that picture in my house because I just love it. Light in all of its forms. I think life is light. I think we are light. As photographers, we chase light. We love it, we wait for it, we curse it when it's not there. <laughs> and I'm always looking into, into the light and looking up at where it came from. So to me, this is very signature in, the, in its expression. And if you put a road and a journey with magical, mystical light, and I'm in heaven. And this is in Valley of Fire in, outside of Las Vegas, mystical light. So I'm a believer in inspiration. I feel it's my responsibility as an artist, as a photographer, to inspire people, to help them to see things a little differently, to help them see, like, you know how you have a friend who comes up to you and they say, oh, oh, this is really a problem, oh, 
life is so, oh, whatever it is, you hear that in their voice, oh, and you know, oh, here we go. So through my work, I like to, to just say, hey, you may think that life is blah, with a big splotch on your lens of your eye as you weep, but truthfully, depending on how you look at it, life can be very different. And I feel it's my responsibility to share that. Whether or not you like compositing, I don't do a lot of compositing, I do things like this. Whether or not you like it isn't the point. The point is to have a point <laughs> in what you do and what you share. And I feel that if we're going to be out there with our work, we have a responsibility to share a vision of something better. And if you don't like the view and you don't like reality, then imagine it came from another dimension. That's what I did. I just said, hey, what if it, someone, okay, so the whole idea of this photo was, oh my God, let's do a ghost train as if it just dropped from another dimension. What would it do? Well, it would kind of have some, I think, some condensation and a little bit of a poof and a little, so it was totally out of my imagination. Again, I am not a composite artist. I was just entertaining myself. So I post this on Google Plus and one day someone says, there, just, there wouldn't be those clouds there. <laughs> and I'm like, and I think I actually wrote, so you were there the last time a train dropped in from another dimension? That is awesome! Do you have a photograph of it? He didn't answer me. Whatever. So, I see you. I see your life. I see what you're telling me. But honestly, I can see the possibility of standing right behind you. And I can see that almost superimposed on your face and in your life. And you're not going to listen to me tell you that. So I'm going to put it into my work. Let's dream bigger. I'm going to be that person standing next to you when you're all depressed and you're like, your, your dog's dead on the side of the road. And I'm going to say, honey, it's not that bad. Don't look at the roadkill. Look up. Look at the light. Look at the sky. And look at the possibilities that are there in your life. Go live it. Don't stop here because the train's coming. It's right behind you. It's interdimensional. You don't see it yet, but it's going to land on you if you stand in one place. So those are some of the broad strokes that govern my life. As above, so below. As within, as without. The reflection of, you know, the heavenly, the earthly. It's very spiritual to me. Um, and it's, I don't think of it that way. I don't walk around and go, oh, this is very spiritual. But I realize that in talking about it, that is where it resides for me. It's a very personal, inner and outer expression of the divine for me in photography. Now, you might wonder why this is here. This is my mother uh, at, I believe she was eight or nine years old. So my love of photography goes way, way back. And this is why. When uh, we grew up, my, our family was always taking lots and lots of pictures. And you know your mother as your mother when you're young. Her family, they photographed the Norwegians, the Norwegian contingent of our family on the ship coming to America from Norway. And that's when it all started. I can't believe the number of pictures that were on this boat coming over from Norway. It was amazing. And they always took pictures growing up, starting in San Francisco in the Depression era, photographs. I met my mother in a whole new way through photography. I loved my mother, but you know, mothers and daughters, they have their, their thing. When I met my mother through photography in this way, I met a young girl who was funny. I met a girl who loved life. I met someone who loved animals and just really radiated loveliness. And that was my mother. But when I met her this way, she became someone that I could be friends with. I, she was someone that I would have made friends with and been best friends with and ultimately was. But had I met her at this age, we would have loved each other. She was awesome. And photography did that for me. It changed my relationship with my family, with my mother in particular, um, when I got to know her this way. And I was hooked at that point. I mean, how could you not love a medium that does that, that changes reality, changes relationships, connects people in a deeper way than you ever dreamed possible? So that became like, oh my goodness, I have to do this. So of course, I did. And 35 years ago or more, probably shouldn't say that, but just to give you an idea, <laughs> I decided I wanted to be a professional photographer. So I went to school 
and we got into the dark room and I loved it. There was just nothing better than taking your vision and swishing it around and watching it come to life and then go, ah, oh, but it needs this chemical and oh, this paper and ah, oh, and I'd be going, mm, and then the smell and the, oh my God, it was just so fantastic until the dark room chemicals made me completely ill headaches and nausea the whole nine yards and pretty much ended that dream and I was devastated. It was like part of me died. That, went, that wasn't one day but when I finally battled it out and came to the conclusion that I couldn't do this for a living, I was like, oh, what am I going to do? And Because I wasn't going to have somebody else develop my work. That would be heresy. <laughs> so I had a, I don't know, strange child. Well, I wasn't a child by then. I was in my 20s. But I had a very long list of things I wanted to accomplish in my life and a time by which it needed to be done. So I was devastated, but again, there's the journey. Got to move forward. So I pull out my list and I said, well, all right, what's next? Okay, I'll be a figure skater for a while. So I was a figure skater. Took pictures at, at every turn in everything I ever did. So I was a figure skater. I was an actor. I was a dancer. Uh, I did uh, voiceovers professionally. I taught everything I ever did. I was a horse trainer and a writer. And I'm talking about at a really high level, very high level of proficiency. Because you just, the engine's going, you gotta do something. <laughs> so keep it going and you have to do these things while you're young. But the one constant through it all was photography. Facing the light, seeing the world through this lens, telling that story bringing the message home to people, it just never went away. So I fell in love with the shadow and the light. And the weird thing is I had a student when I was teaching, a, a pair, well, she rode and, and she and her husband had the business of restoring fine art photography. So an original Ansel Adams, an original West, Edward Weston, an original Paul Strand, Paul Caponegro, these originals would come through. For them, they'd be one of a kind, and it was their job to restore it to original quality, if at all possible. They pulled miracles out of their butt every day. It was amazing. But when she found out my love of photography, all of a sudden, it was, you know, dinners at the pages, and she would invite other artists over, and we would spend all these hours pouring over all these amazing photographs. I held in my hands an 8x10 contact print of Ansel Adams, that he shot of the Golden Gate before the bridge was there that I'm sure many people have seen someplace or another I held the original print in my hands and I could tip it and see the emulsion and see how he framed it and see that in any corner it was absolutely just clear as a bell clean crisp unbelievable workmanship and no bridge which was which was really wild and we would have these long, it was like in the 60s, you know, in the beatnik times, you'd sit, we just sat around and talked about shadow and the mystery and, the, and the, uh, the unspoken message in light and shadow. And, and how if you don't tell the whole story by leaving a lot of it in the shadow, it invites the imagination to go, wow, what is that? What does it mean? I don't know. And you ponder it and you go into it and your imagination wakes up and you engage and you connect in a way that color doesn't necessarily do the same way um, because it tells you more of the story so you have to tell the story differently that way but black and white was so pure and the and just the blinding amazingness of positive space just the the, the like you want to sing out you know with your whole voice and your whole being and then just the one raking uh, streak and that's your story right there it's just, you just stare at it for a while. And I loved that about black and white. And it became the purest form of communication I could imagine. I also learned the bones of line and design and shape and really considering the story that you're gonna tell and really eliminating everything that doesn't tell the story. Incredible economics of what you're gonna include. And juxtapositions, again, the movement in the, in the tracks and the the railing overhead and, the, and just the lines and the you take away everything else and that's what's there and I just have always found that incredibly fascinating but black and white and monochrome informed everything about the way I learned how to shoot this is in uh, I think in the press packet yeah and you know in a field just a leaf in the in the grass 
you put it in black and white, all of a sudden it makes you want to weep. It's whatever you want it to be. It's loneliness, it's, uh, it's funny maybe because you're plucking the strings of time, you're, it's, you know, it's a whole different thing in color, which is how I originally shot it. In black and white, suddenly it gets quiet. And I love that. I say love a lot. This image is pivotal, and I have it in here for a reason. So when I left photography, developing my own work, I went off and I did all these other things, waiting for DSLRs to come into their own. They finally did, and on Christmas one year, my husband comes home, my husband who's in the back, who's the bass player tonight, Joe Dollister, came home with a camera, DSLR, and he said, you keep talking about these images you cannot shoot with the, with the you know, little cameras that you have. He goes, I want to see what they are. So go do it. And he handed this thing to me, and I was like, <gasps> and I mean, I was out the door, and I never looked back. At that point, it was as if a piece of my soul had been returned to me. I felt complete in a way that I hadn't felt in 30 years. Um, and, I ne and seriously, I've never looked back. I mean, everything that has happened in my photography world in current time has been since the day he handed me that camera, and that's what did it. And so this was one of the first images I shot with that camera. It was a Canon T1i. That's all it was. And I was just trying to learn the settings and see again and feel again. And I always loved this because it was sort of like the preciousness of time and age and the effect that it has on you, but the hopefulness of hanging in there, even though you're all decrepit, you know, it's, it's hanging in there. And then Tonality Pro. So with Tonality Pro, I can take the voice of this image and what it had to say and what it meant to me and give it an even more direct and, and plaintive voice to it. So this is the raw of this image. And I like to say that uh, with the return of black and white, and right now in particular Tonality Pro, because of the way it works, I feel like I have finally come back to my roots. Pardon the pun, but I can't help it. Um, these are the kinds of images I used to study with Tony and Marilee that were uh, the Westons and the Adams and the, you know, they would just go out and shoot the weirdest stuff with the roots and all this kind of stuff. And I just loved this because it made me feel like home. And I did this, actually did this one in Tonality Pro, and I like to say, I feel like I'm home. However, it's a much better home. <laughs> it's like they rebuilt it and redesigned it and remodeled this place. There's no more toxic paint on the wall, and there's new fixtures, and everything is still really cool, but there's modern stuff in there where you get to play in more rooms, and they redid my room, and it's bitchin'. I love my new room. Thank you very much for that. So I can now take, again, this is the raw, and I can do that thing with this that's in my mind and, and have it tell the story that I want to in just the way I want to. Um, and now this, the next thought of that last one is it's not just black and white. This is the part that blows my mind. And I've never, ever stood up and talked about software or tried to promote anything like this. And I, and I just can't help it because I'm really excited about this. This is the part where it gets kind of cray cray, is the colors. Now granted, I was <laughs> learning and I went, you know, made this rather extreme. But the point is, this is a piece of software that does black and white. Or does it? <laughs> only do that. It's like the best of both worlds. It puts them together, the monochrome, the black and white, and the toning with color in the craziest ways. And when Dan gets up and shows you some of the stuff that it does, it's going to blow your mind. So I sat there one day and I said, I wonder how many different expressions I can do with this. This is, this is HDR. It was already a done deal. So I took it into Tonality Pro and I said, oh, I can do that. And then, oh, that's a whole different thing. And then, oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe I should use that. And then I was like, ooh, but that's really neat. And then I went, oh, and I did this in like 10 minutes. 
And, and I was like, wow, they're all really different and they're all like different emulsions and different qualities of, of light and shadow and, and, and things. And whether you like them or not, it's not the, again, not the point. The point is whatever you want, whatever you can dream up in terms of the, the monochrome thing, it can do. It is the best idea ever. Um, so I'm really, really loving Tonality Pro for the things, the particular way in which I feel like I'm back in the dark room again. There was a feeling I had when I went in the dark room and I went, okay, I've got my, I've got my developer, I've got my toner, I've got my paper, my favorite paper I just ordered it, got here yesterday, and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to swish it around and watch it come up and oh my God, it's going to be amazing. And I don't, I still can't figure out exactly what it is about Tonality Pro that makes me feel that way, but I get in there and I start playing with some of these tools and sometimes it's a real traditional look I go for. And then sometimes I go, ooh, remember when I used that paper? What was that paper? It had this certain look and I can do that at the granular level. I don't have to compromise my vision at all. So in so many ways, <laughs> I've come full circle with Tonality Pro into this world of expression and my voice and this responsibility that I feel I have to bring love and light into visible reality for people. I have this vision of, of somehow that my work in a space alters the frequency of the space. But it takes the ability to, it takes the ability to take what's inside and not have to compromise in any way what you come up with on the screen and then in print. So I typically will use many tools to make that happen because I have to. And one of the things I'm finding since jumping into Tonality Pro is I feel like I'm cheating <laughs> because I'm only in this one and I don't really have a desire to go anywhere else and fix it. Um, occasionally I do just because I'm me. Um, but really, this, I just did this in like 30 seconds. From the original image, which was the first one that you saw, which I'll put back on the screen when we're done. Um, so it really is a homecoming, and I'm really, really loving it hard. I'm really enthusiastic, and I really think it's a tremendous tool for anyone whose self-expression is what they want to do in color and in black and white. So I want to thank you guys for doing this, this tool, and thank you so much for listening, for sharing my enthusiasm, which kind of goes over the top as a rule. Uh, so I'm glad today was no different. Thank you very much.